Hey, hey, this is Todd, obviously. But um, while we were at Mom and Dad's on Sunday, by uh, request, I'm going to start reading you stories starting at the beginning from their books. And uh, that way, busy people, a lot of busy moms, you can plug in and listen to this while you're on a jog or while you're while you're uh, taking care of your kids or after they go to bed or or whatever. Um, but anyway, this I'm going to start ladies first. So I'm going to start with mom. Stories from my life, Patricia Standard Jensen. And I've got, oh gosh, table of content. We've got all kinds of amazing stuff. So from my favorite childhood story, I have the best mom, my siblings, relationship advice, the Grand Canyon, peace of mind, happiness is simple, tons of great stuff. So let's get started. <clears throat> and I'm the worst reader in the world, but this will help me get better. <laughs> so anyway, uh, introduction. How do you tell the most favorite people in the world that you weren't always an old lady. Yep, I was a child too, and a teenager, and a mom raising a herd of children. I know heartbreak, and I lo know love and peace. It's not all in here, but just a little glimpse of myself. I want to share it with you with the deepest love and admiration to you, my dear children. And P.S. Todd is my favorite of all my children. I just, just kidding, she didn't like that. Um. All right. And then she's got a picture, love is spoken here, and she's got all of our names, Cheen Bean, Cork Bork, Kipper, Whippersnapper, Big T, Erica, America, Heidi Pie, Trace Face, Angie Panji, Ashel, but Ashel, I didn't know that one, Tall Paul, and Beep. All right, so uh, I'll, just t I'll just read this first one real quick. Uh, my favorite childhood story. My all-time favorite childhood story was the story of Little Black Sambo. I hope I'm saying that right, Sambu, Sambo. We had a set of eight books called Book Trails by Child Development Publishers printed in 1946. I spent hours reading through them, enjoying adventure, fairy tales, poetry, and young children's story. The story of Little Black Sambo was in that set of books, and I've read it a hundred times if I've read it once. Today, the book is considered insensitive and racist. Really? <laughs> I dreamed of being Little Black Sambo. I loved his parents, Black uh, Mumbo and Black Jumbo. I hope I'm saying these all right. I wanted them for my parents. He tricked the tigers. The bad guys lost. The little black Sambo had butter and pancakes that should have filled him up for days. The illustrations were bright and wonderful. Who cares if the family was black? Actually, they were Indian. Not me. I was raised in a home that respected all people, no matter what their race. It never occurred to me that the color of one's skin made a difference. My mother was always kind and friendly to the to the only black man who lived in our town. And my parents' best friends for years were as a mixed race couple. The wife was a beautiful, blonde, fun-loving woman from Maine, and her husband was a painter, a Canadian Indian. It has been a pure delight to read that story again, and thus I present it to you, my dear family. The story of Little Black Sambo. Once upon a time, there was a little black boy, and his name was Little Black Sambo, and his mother was called Black Moombo. And his father was called Black Jumbo. And little, oh, and Black Mumbo made him a beautiful little red coat and a pair of beautiful little blue trousers. And Black Jumbo went to the bazaar and bought him a beautiful green umbrella and a lovely little pair of purple shoes with crimson soles and crimson uh, linings. And there wasn't little Black Sambo and then wasn't Little Black Sambo grand? So he put on all his fine clothes and went out for a walk in the jungle. And by and by he met a tiger. And a tiger said to him, Little Black Sumbo, I'm going to eat you up. And Little Black Sumbo said, Oh, please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up. I find that funny that he's very polite to the tiger, calling him Mr. Oh, please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up. And I'll give you my beautiful little red coat. So the tiger said, Very well, I won't eat you up at this time but you must give me your beautiful little red coat. So the tiger got poor little black Sambo's beautiful little red coat and went away saying, now I'm the grandest tiger in the jungle. The little black Sambo went on and by and by he met another tiger and it said to him, little black Sambo, I'm going to eat you up. And little black Sambo said, oh, please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up. And I'll give you my beautiful 
little blue trousers. So the tiger said, very well, I won't you eat you up this time, but you must give me your beautiful little blue trousers. So the tiger got poor little black Sambo's beautiful little blue trousers and went away saying, now I'm the greatest tiger in the jungle. And little black Sambo went on and by and by he met another tiger and it said to him, little black Sambo, I'm going to eat you up. And little black Sambo said, oh, please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up. There's a lot of tigers in this jungle. And I'll give you my beautiful little purple shoes with crimson soles and crimson linings. Linings? Linings? Wow. I warned you. I warned you. Reading's not my forte. But the tiger said, what use would your shoes be to me? I've got four feet and you've only got two. You haven't got enough shoes for me. But little black Sambo said, you could wear them on your ears. So I could, said the tiger. That's a very good idea. Give them to me and I won't eat you up this time. So the tiger put little black Sambo's beautiful little purple shoes with crimson soles and, and crimson linings and went away saying now i'm the grandest tiger in the jungle and by and by little black sambo met another tiger and it said to him little black sambo i'm going to eat you up and little black sambo said oh please mr tiger don't eat me up and i'll give you my beautiful green umbrella but the tiger said how can i carry an umbrella when i need all my paws for walking with duh sambo you could tie a knot on your tail and carry it with and Carry it that way, said Little Black Sambo. So I could, said Tiger. Give it to me and I won't eat you up this time. So he got little, poor Little Black Sambo's beautiful green umbrella and went away saying, now I'm the grandest tiger in the jungle. And poor Little Black Sambo went away crying because the cruel tigers had taken all his fine clothes. Presently he heard a horrible noise that sounded like grrr, and it got louder and louder. Oh dear, said Little Black Sambo. There are there are all the tigers coming back to eat me up. What shall I do? So he ran quickly to a palm tree and peeked around it to see what the matter was. And there he saw all the tigers fighting and disputing with them, which of them was the grandest. And at last, they all got so angry that they jumped up and took off all the fine clothes and began to tear each other with their claws and bite each other with their great white teeth. And they came rolling and tumbling right to the foot of the very tree where little black Sambo was hiding. But he jumped quickly in behind the umbrella and the tigers all caught hold of each other's tails as they wrangled and scrambled. And so they found themselves in a ring around the tree. Then when the tigers were very wee, <laughs> that was funny. When the tigers were very wee and very far away, Little Black Sambo jumped up and called out, Oh, tigers, why have you taken off all your nice clothes? Don't you want them anymore? But the tigers only answered, Grrr. Then Little Black Sambo said, If you want them, say so, or I'll take them away. But the tigers would not let go of each other's tails so they could only say, Grrr. So Little Black Sambo put on all his fine clothes again and walked off. And the tigers were very, very angry, but still they would not let go of each other's tails. And they were so angry that they ran around the tree trying to eat each other up. And they ran faster and faster till they were whirling around so fast they couldn't see, you couldn't see their legs at all. I haven't been showing you the pictures. They're such cool pictures. Okay, I'm gonna hurry and show you because these pictures are Awesome. There's tigers and little black Sambo. No, that is not very PC. <laughs> little black Sambo. Um, okay, so they're running around the tree. So you couldn't even see their legs. And they ran so fast, faster and faster, till they all just melted away. And there was nothing left but a, <laughs> a great big pool of melted butter, or ghee, as it's called in India, round the foot of the tree. Now Black Jumbo was just coming home from work and with a great big brass pot in his arms and when he saw that what was left of all the tigers he said oh what lovely melted butter i'll take that home to black mumbo for her to cook with it reminds me of mom and dad finding grapes in a dumpster and bringing them home hey same kind of mentality that's great resourceful okay anyway so uh he put it all into the great big brass pot and took it home to black mumbo to cook with when black mumbo saw the melted butter wasn't she pleased now she said we're, we'll all have pancakes for supper. So she got flour and eggs and milk and sugar and butter. And she made a huge big plate of the most lovely pancakes. And she fried them in a melted butter with the, that the tigers had made. And they were just as yellow and brown as little tigers. And when they all sat down for supper, 
and Black Mumbo ate 27 pancakes, and Black Jumbo ate 55, but Little Black Zumbo ate 169 because he was so hungry. <laughs> and there's the cover of the book. Cool. There you go. Of uh, the book, Book Trails. So there you go. There's the first story of mom's favorite book or, and her favorite story. That's pretty awesome. So love you. We'll see you. <laughs>